All right, ladies and gentlemen, as ever, my name is Shane. That's Shane is Games, and tonight we're going to be playing not for broadcast for the PC. This won't be our first time playing, so if you want to see how we get to where we are tonight, or check out some of the games I've played in the past, be them obscure, unusual, or nostalgic, feel free to check out my YouTube channel. But for tonight, let's go ahead and get into the game, shall we? So they have put out the new DLC since last time we played, so we'll probably be playing that before we finish this, but right now we're going to jump back into the campaign. Let's see, so we are starting on day 242, a ladder worth climbing. Let's see where that puts us. Also, they have that grim loading screen right there, oh god. 15, respectable. Oh, day 242, there we go. It's a lazy Sunday afternoon in summer with you and Sam making the most of both kids being out of the house. You bang your head coming out of the cupboard with the last two slices of homemade cake. It used to be much easier when you could store things in the pantry. It's rare for you and Sam to actually get to finish sweet things in the house and you savor every moment. Just as you take your last bite, you hear the sound of the front door slamming. That'll be Charlie back from the Go-Getters, which is the junior organization for the current leading government. Oh, that's amazing, Malkale! If you got pictures of that, I would love to see that. That's incredible. You can hear him practically running to come find you, and he's grinning from ear to ear when he finally does. I have some really big news! You and Sam play along, sitting attentively with bated breath. Ready? Charlie asks, and you both nod enthusiastically. With a flourish, he re reveals a new badge from his pocket and proudly presents it for, uh, to you both to examine as he announces, As of today, I'm a member of the first tier of Cohesion Cadets. There's way more stuff I'm going to be doing and I'll be working some weekends, but it's pretty cool. Um... It's a weird name, and also this entire organization gives me the heebie-jeebies. But, uh, I mean, you know, nothing wrong with a weekend job, I suppose. Did he join a guilt? Worse, Scamagoobo, he joined the government. <laughs> the, uh, the Go-Getters is basically the in-game version of the, uh, Junior Republicans. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> not a cult for tax purposes <laughs> um, you and Sam grin back at your son you're thrilled that he's happy and doing well I'm sure nothing bad will come of that it's fine don't don't worry about it day 257 a grown-up child you've always had dinner as a family for the important events and tonight is no exception you have invited Chris around as an olive branch or Sam did, and that's why, apparently. It'll be the last time you're all going to be together for a while. So far, you've managed to avoid fighting with Chris or Susie over politics, which Sam is no doubt grateful for. Susie's spent so much of her time with her boyfriend lately, it feels like she's barely been at home. Given how much time they've been spending together on their own, you were a bit surprised when Susie and Zach proposed a big family dinner tonight. He and Chris have always gotten on like a house on fire, much to your irritation. And of course, Susie would never do any wrong in your mother's eyes, so of course, the fact that you're all packed around the kitchen table, the ear is happy. You take a sip of your drink and enjoy the moment. You and Zach have never quite seen eye to eye on matters of politics. While you don't share his strong disrupt tendencies, you have to admit sometimes he does have a point about the government. Still, if it makes Susie happy, that's what matters. Susie stands, tapping her glass with a spoon, silencing the various conversations. We have an announcement to make. Catches you by surprise, and you find yourself hoping for good news. I don't want to do a big speech or anything, but we wanted everyone to tell you. We hope this isn't going where you think it's going. Zach and I are moving in together, she announces to choruses of congratulations from around the room. Well, I'm moving into Zach's studio for right now while we look for somewhere for the two of us. Susie follows up quickly, clearly excited to be telling you all. Well, we know we don't like Zach, because he's a bad influence, but, but, couple things to consider. Number one, 
Um, if we tell her no right now, everyone else in the room is going to tell her yes. So we're just going to get drowned out. So I don't even think there's a point to saying no. And number two, telling a teenager no without a lot of force behind it usually doesn't mean much either way. Uh, so if I tell her, hey, don't move in with this guy, she's just going to do it, and now she's pissed at us. So you know what? We will support her through uh, this incredibly bad decision she's making. Maybe it'll work out. You never know. That's great news, sweetheart. I'm happy for you both. Susie grins at you as Sam turns to her and gushes, Oh, tell us about these places you're looking at. The room fills with excited conversation and laughter. It's great to see your daughter happy. Eventually, it's time for Susie and Zach to leave and head to their new home. Turns out while you and Sam were out that afternoon, they'd been moving Susie's thing as a surprise. There are a few tears, but mostly smiles as you see them out. Even Chris has been surprisingly well-behaved this evening. Hopefully, it'll all work out. How is the last line of every one of these always so ominous? God damn it. You close the front door and Sam disappears upstairs. When they don't return, you go looking and find them sitting on the floor in Susie's empty room. You slide down the wall beside them and put your arm around their shoulders. Everyone has to grow up sometimes. It's true. It's true. The 278, a sign of things to come. Well, this seems ominous already. Plushie, welcome in. How are you doing today, Plushie? Hope you're having an awesome week. And that uh, Quax has redeemed Invest in a Harvester sequel. So, I'm thinking, like, like the Harvester game should be a point-and-click adventure game. But, like, every time you get in combat, it should instantly go to a type of thing like this, where it's like a choose-your-own-adventure. Combat should be a choose-your-own-adventure. Nobody's done that before. We'll be pioneers. Nobody will know what'll hit them. <laughs> All right, so shopping, something that always seems so tedious before the sanctions, has become even more of a chore now. You manage to get almost everything you need for the family this evening, but you have to come back tomorrow to get through the week. There's a queue to leave the car park, but it's hard to make out why in the dark. Hopefully whatever's causing it won't be long. Yes, there should definitely be a Souls-like section, like in the middle of nowhere. Like, you'll have a side quest where you have to, like, get some groceries, and, like, the grocery store is a Souls-like section. It'd be beautiful. <laughs> you know, Malkiel, you're not wrong. Monkey Island did kind of do combat as a choose-your-own-adventure. That's that's actually a good call. Good call. How appropriate. You put the... <laughs> as the final car in front of you drives off, you realize the queue is actually due to a checkpoint set up at the exit. A friendly-looking man in an advanced uniform, CCO emblazoned in a number of places on it, approaches your car and knocks on the driver's side window. You roll it down. Good evening. Nothing to worry about. I was just wondering if I could see your team membership card, please. Wait, weren't those cards supposed to be voluntary? I'm sorry, I don't have one. Ah, that's not a problem. We had forms with us right here, and we're more than happy to sign you up. The man gestures to his colleague behind him, a young woman in a similar uniform. She clearly received the short end of the stick and is stuck with the paperwork. I thought these cards weren't required. Well, strictly speaking, there's not, but there's also loads of benefits to having them and no reason not to get one. His smile fades a bit, and when he puts a hand up to scratch the back of his neck for a moment, he leans over you, his presence now seeming a little bit intimidating. Uh, you know, no thanks. That's not something I want right now. Almost instantly, the friendly demeanor is gone, and his expression is one of stern disapproval. Well, obviously, I can't make you sign up, but I would strongly recommend you do. And soon. We wouldn't want people to think you had anything to hide, would we? He takes a step back and gestures for you to drive on. You're sure you see him writing something down in your rearview mirror as you head home somewhat more hurriedly than before. Clearly advanced or very keen on everyone joining the team. So that's... That's, that's bad. <laughs> that's a very bad sign. Day 290, an invitation worth ignoring? Question mark? It's a Saturday, one of your few days off, and you've made the most of it. But as late afternoon draws on, the invitation sits pinned to the fridge, staring accusingly at you. 
The Channel 1 Gala is a mandatory work event, Bozeman was very quick to tell you. Also, don't you dare be late. Oh, God. So, there's our two options this time are it's probably not wise to risk Bozeman's wrath, or you already missed your anniversary this year, you're not going to give up another Saturday. Uh, what do you think, chat? What, what's your opinion? Should we go to the mandatory work gala? Or should we tell our boss to go screw ourselves? We need work-life balance. What do you think? I'm very tempted to blow him off. Tell your boss to screw themselves? That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm considering. Game of you say work-life balance as well. Doc Belvin says stay home. That's what I'm leaning towards, because last time, last time he, uh, he told us to miss our anniversary when we were going to go, uh, camping. We went. We went. We did what the boss wanted, and we went. So I think we've earned ourselves a little bit of goodwill this time. It's just a party. We can miss a party. It's fine. Oh, Malakiel is the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> you know, you already missed your anniversary this year. You're not giving up another Saturday. Bozeman is certainly not going to be happy, but then Bozeman wouldn't be happy if he was made king the same day he won the lottery. But that's not your problem. Not right now, anyway. You're entitled to your time off, and you're damn well going to make the most of it. The consequences will be Monday's problem. Next up, Consequences, Day 296. Oh, it looks like we're going back in the studio. Oh, God. Good, let's get in the same building as Bozeman. That'll be great. <laughs> I do like that our boss, his uh, actual name sounds a little bit like Boss Man. That's cute. I like that. <laughs> Day 296, The Heat Wave. All right. Well, let's get everything turned on. Now then, Alex, you will notice the valves are heating up excessively due to the current heat wave. When they get too hot, the trip switch will blow, as you've seen. Once things have cooled down and the trip switch is back to normal, you can get the power back on. You should keep the fan pointed at the correct valve by aiming it up and down. Oh my god. No subsidy for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe when people like disrupt. Mike, he was alive. I hate guns. Give me the willies. Ten seconds, everybody. So, we've got any actual real news tonight? Well, the world's on fire. <laughs> that good enough for you? Going in five, four, three... I think we got rid of the killer toys, at least. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Siege of eternity. The World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their 10th week. In a statement from team headquarters a short time ago, Prime Minister Julia Salisbury issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. Ever since these illegal sanctions were imposed, we have gratefully relied upon trade and aid from our worldwide friends who, like us, refuse to recognize their legitimacy. Today's escalation, however, is nothing short of an act of war. We call upon our international allies to condemn this blockade absolutely, and we warn aggressors to this country that we are neither meek nor defenseless. Thank you. Fall from grace. Once a celebrated role model in the world of sports, Johnny Hamsleys has fallen to new lows. After his failed TV comeback attempt, time seemed to be hard for this former athlete who was photographed this week on the streets of the capital in what a former teammate called an unrecognizable state. It seems the faded footballing legend has resorted to panhandling to make ends meet. 
after losing his sizable fortune and any remaining public respect. One witness even claimed they'd seen Johnny with a sign stating, we'll do kicks for Han. In it to win it, exciting news from Advance today with the announcement of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky winners from across the country will be picked at random to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Soldiering on, despite universal criticism and threats of legal action, the CEO of Remington Slist insists she will be continuing the controversial Junior Employment Opportunity Scheme. Sophia Remington has courted controversy throughout her short career, but the continuation of the program, described by many as a child labour force, is a low point even for her. Unsurprisingly, Sophia emerged from an emergency resolution meeting looking extremely troubled, telling reporters, it all came as a real shock. I thought people hated children as much as I did. <laughs> Leaders shipping out. The trapped scientists undertaking a bold escape from Dante's taint have revealed which of their two erstwhile leaders will spearhead their journey to freedom. While throughout their careers it's been clear that doctors Wong and Swarthborg and Horgensford have worked best together, it seems one of them is now going to be taking a back seat. Ingrid has always been the tempered coolant to David's flagellized metal. So it's no surprise that with the unexpected challenges the team have faced, they chose her methodical and effective approach to getting the team home safely. Critics, however, have speculated that her strategy may be delayed as her name takes much longer to say. <laughs> Life during wartime. As if we didn't have enough aggressors on our borders, internal problems are growing for the government as radical activist group Disrupt caused chaos in Parliament Park last night. Scuffles broke out after the protest, resulting in multiple arrests and the injury of three community cohesion officers. Advanced have yet to comment. The reckless fire will certainly be remembered by all those who have seen these striking images. As their actions escalate, people across the country are asking themselves who are disrupt and what exactly do they want? Other than a new box of matches, of course. All this, and I'll be talking to people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as one of the contenders in this year's Feline Football Championship and her proud owner. That's all up on tonight's National Nightly News. <laughs>
This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is absolutely fine, so... Yeah. Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, Why, God, why? We should be celebrating these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> yeah? We need to evolve gills within 40 years. <laughs> Here it just says, Shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. Can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 There you shit, go, shit, much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running out. It's running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time Abandon for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. <laughs> there you are. Uh, Enjoy that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for <laughs> just one opinion on the planet. The sea will reclaim us all. There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof be need be that everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolf, here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, let's over to Robin Short, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scritchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring <laughs> poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a quick form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know. What have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julius Salisbury at one of the capital's top restaurant. Ooh, swanky. And I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the sixth formers, when the headmaster came and found oh, me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh! How unexpected. Um, <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. Potato, potato. So, Gary... Do you think... Peter Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe. <laughs> what? There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Or would you like to hear one? No, thank you. <coughs> Gary, when you signed up for team membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery, or were there other reasons? I like a flutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh, I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. Oh, oh God! Oh. Are you all right? Yes, it's coming. Uh. Mm. It's inspiration and it's delicious. Mm. Right you are. <laughs> Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. Yeah, yeah. This big one's my favourite. See how it's fibrous, really lovely texture. <laughs> oh, God! Do you encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? If, if it's colour you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. Oh! The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. <laughs> and finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate, you've lived here your whole life. How'd you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. You can tell that. Look at him, proud as punch. Do you know what it's like, son, being the second smelliest town? No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arsminster. <laughs> oh, smug fucks. But who's laughing now, eh? Say <laughs> so what, not me, that's for sure. So what happened, mate? Uh, 
Right, the good people from Rivington Swift came in and saved the day with their factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built Flage factory. Yeah, they gave us this big presentation on jobs and growth. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. Does the stink not affect your life in every way, Barry? I mean, perhaps if you're filling in a tax return or completing the physical act of love. <laughs> it's strong at first, but you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. So, oh, what, what, what's the sickness? Uh, oh, that's nothing to worry about. It takes a few minutes before you develop any symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> now, folk are saying something about the production line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water main, but I think it's probably the few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? What, what are the symptoms? Well, the first one is asking stupid questions. <laughs> then folk experience a lot of inhibition. Of <laughs> course, do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, you stinking old tramp? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the next recording is a period of randomly bursting into song, followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. Oh, I think we've probably never sung in my life. Hello, it's sexy Patrick Brown, and he's wearing sexy shorts <laughs> now. Oh, my God, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous. Why didn't you tell me? I should take my shirt off. You know what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, what? Uh, that will be the bout of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon. Fear the Bannon. <laughs> oh, my. What's the And the ennui. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. Nano Dotty? Is that you? Why are you made out of elbows? You know I don't eat opinions. Ah, ah. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, folks. Uh, once he wakes up, he'll be just fine. We'll just find a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Right, <laughs> that's all here from Grizzleford, a town that's really making a stink. I'm Barry Lardons. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Barry. With a naval blockade being set up around our coastline as we speak, when we come back, I'll be talking to three members of the general public who appear to be here purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. One minute. This next section features a potentially controversial guest. May request some censorship if he goes too off topic. You've done a great job so far keeping everyone happy, so let's keep up the good work. And I can't do this anymore. You say this every Friday. I've done something. What do you mean? Jeremy? Jeremy? My mic is still on. Jeremy, what are you doing? what I'm talking about? Cat football? We should be doing an interview with the war minister or a report from Grantham's out. Even the weather be more fucking relevant than this. Jeremy, please, just breathe. It's just something like to keep people's minds off things. Exactly, which is wrong. People's minds should be very much on things. Christ, it's so fucking hot. Please take your seats as quickly as you can. I can't do this anymore, Jenny. I've had enough. That's it. This is just... Ten seconds. Off. Get over yourself, Jeremy. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself for five minutes? Five, four. Are you getting some stuttering over there? Let me see. Am I getting some drops? It shouldn't be stuttering. Am I stuttering? Let me ask you that. Does my audio sound okay or is it just on the game sound? You're fine. The game is. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm not getting any drops over here. That's really weird. How long has it been stuttering for? That's really weird. On my end, it sounds just fine, so it must just be uh, with OBS. <laughs> Back to Jeremy after the pool place. All right. Um, let's see. CPU is not getting high utilization. All right, I'm going to jump back in and let me know if it's still stuttering, and we'll uh, we'll pause if need be. Welcome back to, to 
to the National Nightly News with me, your host, Jeremy Donaldson. Later, we'll be talking to the captain of the Territory's first cap football team, Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss Piercy? Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yes. Tell us, what brought all this on? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show and I remember seeing the news about the election and it, 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 it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. I, uh... I'm sorry, my bowels have comic timing. And finally, I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. <laughs> Sorry, just checking chat to make sure everything sounded good. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Emperor. Thanks for hanging around as always. Good to have you here. <laughs> Apparently it's a known problem with Win 7 devices, I think. Thought I was on 10? I'm not 100%. I miss these kind of talk shows? Oh my god. They, they were a thing for a while. <laughs> I can bet time stop to broadcast. Excellent time to pause. I think LTG, I need a breath after that. My god, this guy. This guy's going to be a problem. <laughs> So, uh, how about this broadcast? This one has been a bit of a wild ride. <laughs> already so far. Already so far, everything has been insane on this one. I, I don't even know how to deal with this. <laughs> I hope you folks are enjoying this. This is, this is taking my breath away. My God. Definitely messed up a lot at the beginning. Almost probably got a game over. We're going to get like a D or an F for that first segment. But uh, we turned it around. We got plenty of green up there. So I think we're going to be able to get through this, hopefully. Is that right? No, according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, um, let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. Ah! hard. At work, they've asked me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It's really affected my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking irritating. Do people tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> And Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me, and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group of people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us so far. And how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway success. Shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. Huh. Well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Oh, come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. <laughs> what it would be like to have a pair of tits. <laughs> Could you? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's very hot. What was I thinking? <laughs> that you're a team fuck puppet? No. Or a sellout cunt? <laughs> Apologies. Just a reminder that he can't help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? <laughs> fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> Right, Frankie, Rose, tell us, how can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital <laughs> the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh Half. What did I say before the show? That it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No, I, <laughs> I didn't say, Well, I didn't say we that. may have to end that there, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. Stop it all! This is exactly what I'm talking about. We demand respect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, later, 
I'll be talking to Professor Pumpkin. A ginger tabby with a world-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't. Let go. Not you. Unhand him at once. Yes. Oh, enough. That's enough. Whoa. Oh, what are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut. Don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare cut to the ass before I tell you to. Now, you in the broadcast centre. Bozeman's little scapegoat. You listen to me. You cut the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. Jerry, think about <laughs> I am thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. Christ, it's so fucking hot in here. Do you remember when we used to do the real news? Before it was all lottery winners and bloody cat football. We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccups have stopped. You three, get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Lock the doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now. Good. Yes. Now. Right then. You in the broadcast centre. Alex, you listen to me. You pay attention. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to play in the commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of the machines, and when I say so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. Now, all cameras. Nice all of you aren't replaying that tape. This station does not negotiate with terrorists. I hope I've made myself clear. You seem to know what to do. Every single thing that comes out of this studio is either one-sided or for now, we're going to show the other side for a bit. For a bit of fucking balance. Like the good old days. Alex, play the fucking tape. I don't want to hurt any of you. I see anything I don't like, I will not hesitate to start by killing this man. Now, reset the system for the third segment. I imagine the ratings are going to be through the roof. Oh, Alex, you're going to get me in trouble with that. Let's hope you made the right call. I don't know, man, I don't know. <laughs> Look, you kind of punch that here. Oh God! Turret Hark, welcome in. How are you doing today? It's it's been a day. Yeah, the hostage thing is not a good look. Pulling a gun on your coworkers on live TV never a good look. Not in the slightest. James Moore, welcome in. Yeah, things got uh, things got pretty intense. We are having some high temps in the studio today. Temp tensions are running high, but that was uh. That was, that was way hotter than I was expecting right there. Nab that cat run, welcome in. How are you doing today? And LTG, how's everything going with you today, LTG? Hope you are doing well. I ran the ad he wanted to. I didn't want any violence. So, uh... Uh, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. I had to make a, I had to make a call. I had to make a call very quickly. Uh, we'll see. Oh, God. There really wasn't a great thing to do there, I don't think. Excuse me. No violence, only violence, if only. Interesting is good. Hopefully the stress won't uh, last too long. Yeah, damn that can't run. Oh my god, this is this has gotten so intense. This has been a very funny stream today, but also that went way off the rails. I don't uh, I don't really know what to expect now. Oh god, no. Alan James. Oh. Alan James is the leader of the resistance. Oh, come on. Hashtag Shane Tuck Terrace. Yeah, this just came out on PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, they just brought out a VR version as well. How long? Jeremy, please. 
How long? 17 seconds. And the studio doors are all still locked? Yes. So what now? I don't know. This wasn't what I planned. I mean, some of it was. I had speech, look. But this, this was unexpected. So what now, Jeremy? It was supposed to be your day off. God, please, don't do any more stupid things today. How long? How long, Jenny? You already lied. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Joining me, unexpectedly, for what I very much imagine will be my last broadcast, are two new guests. Jenny works here at the National Nightly News and is someone I consider, well, a friend. And next to her is, what's your name? Andy. Andy's a policeman, only we don't call him that anymore. He's a community <laughs> cohesion official. Officer. Sorry? It's, um, it's community cohesion officer, CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? Being rebranded? It's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore. You know, the, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh, the team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. <laughs> I couldn't say. Couldn't or wouldn't? I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? We'll come back to you later. Jenny? I don't want to be on the news, Jeremy. That's perfectly understandable. We'd want to do this. Jenny. Why did you join the National Miami News Team? I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this programme? The National Nightly News. It was the news everyone trusted. Was? Was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Well, there is a great big Alan James-sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. What do you mean? I saw your face when that fit came down. You didn't know, did you? It's about the message, not the messenger. Like I said, you didn't know. No. I didn't know. The people I met were with... He wasn't <laughs> there. God, I didn't I'm know sorry. it was Alan James. I'm sorry. But seriously. Alan fucking James. You're flushing your life down the toilet for... God, I love you, Jeremy, but... He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. That right. Look, forget Alan James. There is still something deeply wrong. And you know it, Jenny. And you know it, Andy. And you, you are home. You know it too. Meanwhile, I'm interviewing a guest who stinks of shit. Patrick is paddling about in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, but what a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression, and the news isn't saying anything. We're not saying anything. Says who? Alan fucking James. What are all those scientists working on at Grantham Downs? What are they testing underground at Altergrave? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking useful. How many people have you brought in for consultations? just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards. Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to help. Then why do you need these? Not really help when it's off at a gunpoint, is it, Andy? Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. You eat these cards with my notes on it. And you'll probably digest a fact. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? Knowing a fact? What? I don't understand. Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. What? Eat the fucking news, Andy, or I'll force it down your fucking throat. Jeremy, stop. Go on. Really? Eat it. Eat it, you fucking bully. Jeremy, stop. They will kill you. 
please, don't make me watch that. Of course. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Annie. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. And any time. All cameras on me. This new regime of ours is so seductive. I understand that. But before we all hand off our freedoms, should we ask to whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? A record high, again, if you care. Shouldn't someone ask advance how they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of, who shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie, for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. Anyway. That's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast in the last break. I didn't know it was going to be him, but I guess that just about sums it up. We are all up Ship Creek with a paddle made of Alan fucking James. Christ, it's also fucking pointless. I was going to quit tonight. Take a holiday, try something else out of the limelight. Maybe try having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Never tried. I... I loved you. And now, well... Oh God, Jeremy, don't! I've tried my best to be honest with you, but this just isn't the news anymore. And I'm sorry. Dad. I've lost this Alex. fight. Alex, think of the consequences. I'll let you down. Please, we can't show you. Cut to the ads. My name... I can't. I can't. <laughs> oh God. Oh, let me get caught up on that. Oh, that was that was a lot. That was a lot. Punisher, welcome in. Yeah, he's making everybody nervous there. Oh my God. I do kind of want to see the cat too. Yeah, there's, there's, Jeremy will not be there next time. I'm sure that, I don't know who it's going to happen, but I'm sure he's not going to be there. Yeah, so we got a D for that for a second because I botched that real bad, but we got A pluses for the other one. I am shocked. What was that all about? Did he snap? Yeah, basically. He got really frustrated and he was planning on reading a big speech and then quitting, but things went off the rails and he ended up pulling a gun on his co-workers. Um, and he had me play a uh, videotape from the opposition, which seemed like a good thing because the current government's kind of assholes, but it turns out the opposition's also run by a giant asshole, so, which he didn't know, excuse me, so... Uh, yeah, everything went very bad for him, and he happened to be waving around a gun when everything went bad. So, uh, I'm glad I cut to a commercial. I mean, he's right about most of it, but... I mean, number one, you can't, you can't pull a gun on your co-workers. You, you just can't. That was, that was horrific, and he should not have done any of that. And also... I mean, he couldn't have known that tape was going to go in that direction, but that went very badly for him. How have you been? It was a long week, but I'm glad it is over, Punisher. How about yourself? How are you doing today? <laughs> Snap, crackled, and popped. That was really intense. I hope everyone's doing all right. My company is still doing badly. I'm noticing that. When a mad gunman is the most lucid one in the room... <sighs> like I, I think I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with Jenny. Jenny just chose not to be waving a gun on the national nightly news. Is all. <sighs> also, if you notice there, I was not bleeping any of the blue stuff, which is the stuff the government wanted me to bleep. But I did bleep the swears, just the swears. 
<sighs> Advance is not a fan of me. That's the current government. The uh, resist. The resistance is a fan of me. The, the studio still likes me at least. So that's a good thing. Oh, jeez. You say he wouldn't have been able to say his piece, but I mean, I'm the one in the control room. I would have let him talk. I would have. I played the tape when he asked me to. He did do it with hostages, which did affect my decision. I will admit that. But also, still, I, I would have let him talk, personally. Yeah, at least the studio's with me, I guess. Oh, yeah, the CCO would not have let him talk. That's true. That's true. Oh, God. Like, it's, it's, it's one of those situations where there is no unanimously good way that could have went. There really wasn't. There wasn't any perfect way out of that situation, unfortunately. People made a lot of decisions there, and not all of them are great. Yeah, he's... Uh, something... Junior cohesion something, so yeah, that's... We're gonna have to deal with that, Malkiel. That's, uh... That's one thing we're gonna need to cut off at the knees next time that comes up. Yeah, basically, Punisher, once he did that, that's, uh, that was what was happening there. Oh! Tomorrow! A tape to remember. You wake up still partly in shock from what you saw in the news last night. What you had to edit on the news last night. When you come downstairs, you find your family sit in the living room waiting for you. You take a seat on the sofa between Sam and Susie. Sam swallows, hesitating before starting. We were so worried about you last night. After Jeremy, everything that happened. Sam shakes their head. I wonder what they'll do with him now. Are you okay? I, I can't shake the feeling that he might be right. Sam looks to the kids, then back to you. We saw you choose to play that tape. They pause before continuing. And I couldn't help but wonder, but why? I, I didn't feel like I had a choice, honestly. The dude had hostages. What was I supposed to do? <sighs> yeah, at least Jeremy survived, at least. That's a good thing. What? That's not good enough. Disrupt your bad people. I can't believe you did that. Charlie's outburst seems to come out of nowhere, and no one in the room is prepared for it. Do you even think about how this stuff affects people? You're a fucking idiot! Sam tries to interject Charlie, but he's already slammed the door. Charlie always was a bit black and white about this sort of thing. What it's worth, Alex, I think you were in an impossible situation. Somehow you managed to make the right call. Sam throws their arms around you. Only you were stuck in the studio having to make that choice. No one can criticize what you did, and I'm proud of you. You've never been so grateful to have Sam support you. You take a deep breath and gather your thoughts. It's all a lot to take in. You're not sure you fully processed what happened last night, let alone what Sam and Charlie think about it all. You look to your daughter. I know this is an incredibly difficult thing, and we don't always agree, but I do think you made the right choice. Susie smiles at you. You had to play it. There was just no other option. You put an arm around her and give her an affectionate squeeze. It's nice that you've at least got some company. The TV is playing through some old western show, but it's not as quite as distracting as you'd hoped. You are never going to please everyone. Jumping forward a few weeks? Day 324, a questionable choice? You got off work early today, a rare enough occurrence to put a spring in your step. As you close the front door, you can hear excited conversation bubbling from the kitchen. Clearly, someone's popped around for a couple on Sam's Friday off. Hopefully, there are still some biscuits left. As you enter, you see Sam, Susie, and Zach are all laughing and discussing something. As soon as she sees you, your daughter turns and enthusiastically presents her hand, which sports a prominent diamond ring. Look, Zach proposed! We're engaged! Ah, uh, that, that, that's amazing news! I'm so happy for you! There's literally no way to... There's no good way to tell someone I don't approve of this engagement. Like, I could do that. I could. She would go scorched earth 
and I don't think Sam would back me, so you know what? It's her decision. It's her terrible, terrible decision. It's fine. That's how you do it, bro. I wish I could get my mouth to stretch that much. I'm, I'm happy for you. The best way to tell somebody to just remove your engagement is to save up for their daily form. God! That is incredibly passive aggressive and I love it. The pair then em them end up staying for dinner. They move pretty quickly, but when you know, you know. You're genuinely pleased for them. Whatever happens. You'll always be there for her either way. That's basically the long and short of it. Whatever happens, we'll support her. That's all you can do, really. Day 361, A Burden Born. It's been six months since you and Sam last discussed Grandma's ever-increasing medical costs, and Emma, whilst very pleasant, has proved as expensive a nurse as you feared. You can't quite believe it's been that long already. But the sanctions are really starting to hit home now. And unfortunately, the government's only solution to help the ailing elderly is a day trip to the transition center. Why does everyone always seem to come back to why does everything always seem to come back to money? Uh, for anybody that missed the first episode, the transition center is the uh, um where where they assist the elderly with passing on. I say as delicately as possible. Oh man, Punisher! I hope you enjoy it. I was actually watching some of that before the stream. It looks amazing. Jay Melman, excellent! Hope everything went well, and welcome in. How are you doing today? <laughs> the deletion home, basically, that's a good way to call it. Trey Dog, welcome in. How are you doing today? This time, it's you at the kitchen table, surrounded by bills and paperwork when Sam comes to join you. Today, Emma told you there was really nothing more you could do, except an expensive, experimental new treatment that might not even help. Sometimes your mom wants the treatment. More often, she talks about visiting a transition center. Hard to know what she really wants. Sam puts a hand on yours. What are we going to do, honey? She's your mother. It has to be your choice. <sighs> so let's be clear, first of all. Let's be clear. This is an impossible choice. There is absolutely no right answer here. Because, because of this line right here, it's hard to know what she really wants. Because we don't truly know her will, this is absolutely impossible. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no way to answer this correctly, is the thing. Huh. <sighs> We are well off. We do have money. This is true. We could probably afford the procedure. That's true as well, Malika. Only one of the two choices you can't go back on. <laughs> That's a very important point to make. Most definitely. Oh, jeez. Don't bring up that song, Trey Dog. You're gonna make me cry. That song breaks my heart every single time I hear it. <laughs> what do you guys think? What's what's your thoughts on this one? I would love to hear. Cause I I've got an idea where I want to lean, but I'm curious what you people would think when put in this completely unfair situation. Although unfair, not unrealistic. This is definitely something you have to do. Hey, Dame Karen, welcome in. How are you doing today? We're making sad decisions today. <laughs> what is this, Canada? They haven't actually said where this takes place. Obviously, it was filmed in the UK, but... I think it's supposed to take place in, like, a... Like, not quite UK. That's basically the UK is where it takes place in, I think. <laughs> this is true, though, LTG, most definitely. What is the treatment? I mean, they're not going to tell us is the thing. Uh, basically, they said right here, except an expensive experimental new treatment that might not even help. So basically, the only the only thing that could help her was a very expensive treatment that might not do anything. And sometimes she says she wants it. Sometimes she says she doesn't. 
It's it's been wild, Dame Karen. It's been very funny. It's been very dramatic. It, it there's been a lot going on today. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like she has some sort of degenerative uh, mental disorder. Uh, they did mention before that she's been having trouble remembering things slash people. So that is definitely a thing. Between Saint Bubbly and Arsminster, I love that name, Arsminster. That's. That's incredible. Are the toys still alive? No, I think we've defeated them all. Plus, we found out at the end of that uh, chapter where the toys were attacking the city that that thing was all a dream. That entire sequence was all a dream, so thankfully, thankfully, no, uh, uh, fuzzy little robot bears are not besieging the city. We're good. It was hilarious, though. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, Rain, you support dignity and dying, so if it's time to go, it's time to go. I do as well, but like it says, she doesn't always say that what she wants. That's the tricky part. And of course, there's no going back from that one, so if she's not 100% sure. Same here, Bob, same here. That That is what I would like, but again, sometimes she says she wants the treatment. <sighs> No going back? Have you considered zombification? That is a very different game, I suspect. Yeah, I wish we had more information. This is... This is a very big, life-changing decision, and we don't have a lot to go on. That's true. We, we, we know so very little about Grandma's condition, unfortunately. We just don't know. <laughs> I'm leaning towards getting the treatment because if sometimes she says she wants the treatment then I don't know that I can say for certain she's committed to ending things and if you're not really committed to ending things I don't, I don't think that's the good choice because there is no going back from that so I think if there's some indication that she might want the treatment and also apparently we're well off so presumably we can afford the treatment, even if it is going to hurt a lot. I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what we're going to do. All right, so our current wealth has dropped to not worrying every day. That's a dramatic drop, but still, we're not, we're not in poverty yet. It's a difficult choice. You never know when you might need that money, particularly for the kids. What if Charlie gets in an accident? What if Zack and Susie's new house floods and they need your help? What if you give them a few more good years with their grandmother? Surely that's worth the cost. Sure, just turn that knife, game. Just turn that knife! I'm fine. Don't worry. We're, we're good. <laughs> we're going back in the studio. That'll be, uh... That'll be a nice distraction. <laughs> See that? I, I can see some comfort in that, Lee, too, definitely. Day 371, the 20-week war. What the hell? Good evening, Alex. It's Boozman here. Hope all's well with the family. Just a heads up, we're expecting those troublemakers at Disrupt to attempt to hack the channel during the broadcast. So keep an eye on the interference screen and stay out of the orange. Let's keep the news on the air. It's important, now more than ever. Oh god, alright, that's not good. Oh, I gotta turn the power on, right? Documents you see that thing you do where you turn politicians into humans? Oh, just don't get drawn into talking about the war. They do know this is the news, don't they? You don't hear this from me, okay? Oh. Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. I think she's giving a speech or something tonight. I'll get it on the late news. Oh, great, so they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Sometimes you sound just like him, you know. Which tells the cautionary tale How are you? Brave young ladies battles to survive the cruel administrations of our neighbors. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Ten seconds, everybody. Rumble dog And that takes us after the weather and public information. Going in five. Four. Three. 
it's time to join Megan and the team for the National Nightly News. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolfe. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Sadly, however, more casualties were reported today and as the weeks and months of this war make ever more demands on our armed services, those numbers will, tragically, only continue to rise. Yeah, I noticed that as well, LTG. I got a fancy new mixer. Uh, the good news is, yay new technology. The bad news is, it looks like there's a sound mixer? That looks like a soundboard right there. Like, uh, some sound clips. And, uh, that's a little worrying. I also noticed there's no more fan over on the left, so it looks like the heat problems are solved. That's a good thing. Yeah, not just the barricade and sanctions. It sounds like we're uh, invading now. <laughs> yeah, not playing that one. No, that was a little too uh, propaganda for me. <laughs> oh, jeez. There is uh, this button right here. That looks like an applause button. <laughs> yeah, I got a stream deck in here. Oh, God. Yeah, Dame Karen. I don't, I don't know. So we've got, that looks like applause, that's a thumbs down, there's a happy face and a surprised face. I'm thinking those are going to be like audience clips. I'm assuming like during one of the breaks today, somebody's going to explain that to me and we're going to see what happens. The sound felt upgrade from Windows XP. <laughs> yeah, they fixed the AC at least, I'll take that I guess. Don't starve. Advance's food program moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. However, with the reported rise in mental and physical health issues since the imposition of the blockade, critics have questioned whether those smaller communities which are only now starting to receive help could have been better and quicker served. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centers has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organizations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. With dwindling medical supplies leaving many of our most vulnerable facing chronic pain, it can come as no surprise that the transition centers have found themselves stretched to capacity. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Start me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Manklipur. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Manklipool Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally tonight. Our mutual friend. Bail was denied in the High Court today for shamed former National Nightly News anchor Jeremy Donaldson. The presenter will be transferred to new lodgings at Pendron Ridge Prison, while the lengthy preparations for his trial, which is still 18 months away, begin. Since being taken into custody 10 weeks ago in this very studio, little has been heard from our former colleague. Despite how things ended, we wish him the best, and we'll be sure to bring you all the details of that court case every night. But first this evening, with the war about to enter its 21st punishing week and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home in Lanfordshire. That's coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Well, this is a dramatic new sequence. Part two 
two, I'm a little overexcited to announce. I'll be interviewing the one and only Lil C. And later, we've got a new feature that's sure to keep you coming back for more. But first tonight, let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's speaking to us from his home in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Prime Minister. Have we caught you exercising? Oh, have we started? Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. I have just a few minor adjustments. I mean, nothing drastic. I haven't joined the gin more or anything. As my old man used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car. Language, park. Prime Minister. What? Quick fiddle? <laughs> what, what's wrong? Oh, shit. It's shitter, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. And can you tell us what brought about this new you? Brought well, about you know, this new you? C and I were watching, you know, the night the blockade began. When Jeremy Donaldson, well, you know, and it was a blistering heart, as I'm sure you all remember. And I, I were a bit wheezy from all the cigars and all that. And Mrs. C turns to me after, you know, after the signal dropped away, you, and she was in floods of tears. And she says, Peace, she says, I could go on without you. She says, So I made a decision. And since that day, I have stopped smoking cigars. Except for Christmas. My birthday. Weddings. State dinners. I swear I say, I can't as used as Rudy Black was does a guy anywhere. And apparently I'm going on a walking holiday this Christmas, and that should finish me off for bloody good. Did you make the decision to holiday within the country this winter because of the blockade, Prime Minister? Well, Mrs C has never liked travelling at the best of times. <laughs> uh, these are certainly not the best of times. On that we can all agree. And uh, there's a lot of red tape involved in leaving the territory at the moment, as I'm sure you're all aware. Some of those farmers are bastard now. All in it together. What? All in it together! Oh, yeah. Also, it doesn't seem very advanced to be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet, Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll be visiting Svenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? What? Did you know about this, Gail? No one tells me anything, Peter. You should know that. What do you know? Well, leaving that for a moment, it says on this card that a body like yours must take some planning to achieve. What's your morning routine? Well, I have a frigid morning routine. Rigid? It's rigid for fuck's sake! Oh, yeah. A, a, a rigid and demanding plan that my doctor and personal trainer... <laughs> Who's your personal trainer? Ah, oh, some prick or Is that on your card? I thought you might wonder. Prime Minister, speaking of planning, with the blockade in its 20th week and the people of this country reeling from its effects, what plans do you have to get us out of this mess? Well, that's a very blunt question, Mr. Surely Wolf. one for which you, the democratically elected Prime Minister, must have an answer. Don't you get smart with me, Pat. I was a fucking national treasure before you were a twinkle in the milkman's scrotum. You want to talk about plans? Let me tell you about plans. That's all we do. Fucking plans and revised plans and then meetings to discuss okay. the implementation of plans. And plans and yet more planning for fucking plans and yet more fucking plans. Well, that's good. That's good to know, Plan. Do you know, I used to really hate you, but you were I've been watching you. And you know what? You get more like him every day. Ooh. I will take that as a compliment. Nice! Prime Minister, later on this evening, your co-leader, Julia Salisbury, is going to give a national address from team headquarters. Can you give us a hint of what she's going to say? Um, yes. Well, uh, I imagine that there sorry, will be sorry, you the usual... Up no, what, what, I, mean, what do, I mean is... You do know about this broadcast, don't you, Prime Minister? Well, I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, but Julia and I have no secrets from each other. We don't memorise each other's bloody diaries either. As me old mum used to say, if you wanted to get a job done quick, don't get bogged down in the pew. What else you got? Sorry? 
Only cards, what else? A little piece of my life she wanna rustle through. Get out, refill my last. Ta. Oh, come on. Uh, come on. Okay. What music do you listen to when you work out? Well, Gail tells me that I work out to the little C, but I have absolutely no fucking idea who that is. Oh. Do you think the C stands for... It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. Yeah, actually, that, that does make more sense, actually. Uh, how's rationing affecting you? It's hard, but we get by. You just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs C. And many a fine single malt. I want full of it. So for a decent night's sleep, of course. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, it's time for the culture spot with Lil C and a world premiere performance of her new song. I genuinely can't wait to hear that. We'll be back after this. One minute back, everybody. Oh. Happens when you wander from the cars. I don't think he knew about her statement. I don't... Well, <laughs> that got pretty wild. That got pretty wild. Frequency analysis in Star Trek. I kind of dropped it once there, but otherwise I was doing pretty good. I was trying to switch the cameras and do the uh, the bleeping of the swears and do the uh, the frequency thing, but it, it was a little bit much. It was a little bit much. Oh my god, uh, LTG, have you heard about, uh, what's his name, the, the guy from, um, of course I've lost all of my nouns now, the, the game designer with the big moon head, I don't know why I can't remember his name at the moment, but uh, the guy that made Nier, the guy that made Nier, he, have you heard he's got a new game coming out, because if you haven't, uh, make sure to check what the premise of the game is, because it sounds... Oh my god, LTG, look up the premise of his new game. Yoko Taro, thank you. Look up the premise of his new game. It's f called 404 or something? Um, for anybody that doesn't have a, uh, the chance to Google it right now, I'll let you know what the premise of the game is. Uh, you are fighting against an evil mega corporation that is very thinly veiled uh, version of Sega? And all of the characters in the game, which I assume is going to be a gacha game, are waifu versions of classic Sega games, like Virtua Fighter and Hang On, Hagane. So, very Yoko Taro, but also, who greenlighted this? <laughs> LTG, I thought you'd be interested. So yeah, this is that's a that's a thing that's happening. And like, just so we're clear, this isn't just a thing that someone's like talking about. This isn't a gag someone made at a convention. There's a trailer for this out. There is a trailer with art in it for the characters. This is happening. <laughs> so yeah, look look this up. Yes, some guy in a hat. That is 100% a thing. Because they have that orange line there, if I wanted to, I could allow Disrupt to hack the broadcast. That would be an option. I chose not to let them hack the broadcast because, number one, I don't trust them. And number two, I decided to put some faith in Megan, which, hell yeah, Megan, fighting the good fight there. She's She was definitely uh, living up to my expectations, which is, that's awesome. She's doing great. She's she's in a tough situation. She's doing good. So respect there. <laughs> Dame Karen, people are getting it sued. I think Sega's actually funding it somehow. I don't know how that's real, but I think so. <laughs> The same title character is literally the Tar Jaguar. I'm going to have to play that series someday, aren't I? I don't know that I can keep getting around it. <laughs> but no, no, this is something different. Alright, so we're in a commercial break right now. Let's, uh, let's see where we're going from here. I don't think anyone's supposed to know. When you mentioned it, Bozeman's face turned a color that I think you call embolism. Am I in trouble? Bozeman? Nah, you're like the daughter he never had. Mm. 
I suppose the higher-ups might fire him, though. Who's Lil C? Well, if there's any justice, me. Who's Lil C? Are you winding me up? What? I'm civilised. I read books. Wow. Segment grade D. Oops. Did not do great there. No, uh, it's fine. Yep. All right. Yeah. So it's an applause button. Oh, jeez. What even is that commercial? I don't know. What was that one called? Name's right there. I'm not even gonna try and read that. <laughs> hey, Geek Boy. How are you doing today? Good to see you as always, Geek Boy. Hope you're doing well. I've never heard of her before. Oh, she's big, really big. Really? Yeah. Is she any good? Nah, of course not. She dog shit. <laughs> but kids go mad for her, absolutely mad. Live in 10 seconds. Hang on, Colin, you've got kids. Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. <laughs> what? what? Five, four, three. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's Men before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album, Smashing the Chat Records, at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. just say you look incredible oh thanks dave i'm doing this new regime all right so that's that's basically how it works is whenever whenever there is a reaction needed i get to choose one of the four buttons to to activate so i hit the applause there because they told me to but in the future i'm going to be able to decide between the applause button the thumbs down button the smiling the la i'm assuming that's laughter or shock. So I'm guessing you've got applause, I'm guessing you've got boos, I'm guessing you have cheers, and I'm guessing you have a gasp. That's what I'm thinking there. That freaked your speakers out? We've had a little bit of a, a weird audio clipping today. Let me know if anybody hears any of that today. Baboon's water! It's the name of the perfume. What a fantastic and alluring name! <laughs> We're all about that laugh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save these tactically. I'm gonna play nice until the moment comes. We'll see. <laughs> and it really does work. Ooh. What's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. Wow, is is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat of a super fan, so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. <laughs> oh, bless you. I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. So your first album, F My Face Together, it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded. I mean, what was that like for you? bonkers just yeah. so weird I was in all the papers and the magazines overnight I went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show wow that must have been bizarre not really it was just like any other morning you know get up at five go on a four mile run have three meetings on my cabbage bath but then only then was my dad actually talking to me oh, of course I mean the famed country singer Billy Bob Jean short I didn't know you'd been estranged there's nothing that strange about it Megan Okay, yes, he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. Uh huh. So uh, this. I'm gonna need a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need just a second. Please bear with me. <laughs> but yes, you have guessed, Chet. This is very clearly a Miley Cyrus reference. <laughs> with her famous father, Billy Ray, who, as far as I know, has ever, never claimed that uh, aliens told him to hate women. But, as she said, we can't really prove that they're wrong. <laughs> God, what is happening in this game? Who wrote this and why? 
I need to find the people that wrote this game. I need to put my hands on their shoulders and I need to shake them. I need to shake them like this while screaming, Why? Why did you do this? I don't have anything else to react with right now. I think that's about it. I don't have a button for that on the soundboard, unfortunately. You found explosion to your popularity. I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing like nice underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as the manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> So what, what's the album about? So I thought it was about like how pretty and great I am, yeah. but actually it's about monetizing youth, I think, or about like promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. The manager again. <laughs> yeah, he says insecurity is an opportunity. <laughs> Do you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? <laughs> telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dance unit and then this part will it all be forgotten about. Wow! Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yep, it's from my album Put It In My A Together and it's out tomorrow. So soon, after the last one. Oh yeah, I've actually released two albums since lunchtime and a clothing line during this interview. Cry, cry, cry. <laughs> so this is called Cry For Help. And it's going to be in all the best high street and retailer shops. And it's out now. So girlies, now. you know what to do. Scream and cry until somebody gets it for you. Ooh. Uh, there she goes. Blimey. <laughs> all these projects, they're keeping you very busy, aren't they? It must be tough. Yeah, it can get tough and I hate it sometimes. And I hate myself. I just want to like cry into a bath of root veg. But then I think thousands of girls would do anything to be me, so I must be quite lucky. Well, you, you know you don't have to do this, though, don't you? Yeah, I do think that sometimes. Most nights between, like, my fourth vodka and the eighth time a stranger slaps me around the arse. I think things could have been different, you know, like, better. But I don't know. I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come on, I'd press record on my cassette, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. Oh, you so, Sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? <laughs> yeah, which can be tough, and sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Quagler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, you know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, <laughs> if only your opinion was as valuable as his. <laughs> and on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So, it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. But you know what, it's actually alright. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. Alright then, well, you can go and get ready for that. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> It was a very specific type of pleasure <laughs> to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so, here it is. Here we with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the boys' favourite. The Queen I tried! Team. Is this deliberate, Alex? We do like our guests to come back, you know? We'll see! Uh -huh. Since mom burdened me, she was only 
53, but gave you save our family. What? There's no one judging me if I'm the one that's in your fantasy. Don't die alone, this pain is gonna bring you home. I ain't no liquor spotter, come and skirmish on my daughter. Quick before I get much older, tie me down and pour me like an enemy soldier. See some action, so come and break my sanctions. I'm going to need another minute. I should... <laughs> what? What? I... <laughs> V6, welcome in. You came in. You came in at a weird time. You came in at a weird time. Rin, you are looking things up at work. You can't look away. I apologize personally and profoundly. <laughs> God, I just, I, I, just, I, don't, I don't have words for that. What words are there for that? What words have my language invented that deal with that? We haven't. In the history of the English language, we weren't ready for any of that. We didn't anticipate that happening. We didn't think it would come up, so we just didn't make words for that, unfortunately. So I apologize. But I don't have anything for that one. <laughs> Yeah, good luck, Rin. Good luck. I uh, hope you succeed in getting that out of your brain, because I don't think I ever will. I think it lives there now, permanently, as a uh, resident there. <laughs> I think we're all in all this now. Oh, I've probably been there for a while, I imagine. Oh my god. How was... Oh my god, those lyrics. Those Jesus Christ. I'm... Let's just continue. Well, if that doesn't distract you from the world outside, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for, well, for doing that. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll finally be revealing the new se segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. And we're out. Can I just say... Thank you so much for letting me do this. It really uh, means a lot to me, you know. Yeah. To be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. Uh, well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. Watch out for that father of yours, won't you? Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain perspective on me. You know what it's like. Oh. Oh, right. Um, and Michael? What was Michael? What about Billy Bob Jean Shorts? Oh, my dad. He's such a sweetheart. We both had the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our image together. Wow. And Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a G&T before my meeting with the Lube guys. <laughs> if they say for your pleasure, I'm going to start needing it. I hate to tell you this, but you're going to need all four sound effects buttons for this next section. Try and pick the most appropriate sound so effect for the actor's lines. Yen, they can't hear your choices, so they'll be assuming you're helping things along. Oh, God. Look ridiculous. Look Mind like you, after the last section, you can't help us all. No, no, try and do better. No, not I'm try. I'm better than that now. I'll tell you what. Just keep adding flowers until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely. Right away. Ten seconds. Five, four, 
three. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've dropped the algebra. I go by Jeff Dupoon now. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artiste. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. <laughs> oh. It's shit. And how does Angela feel about all this? Who? Your, uh, your wife. Your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with Norm now. We were married last month. <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. And um, why did you write this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a pro-team sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You wring every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, got out my typewriter and started clacking. Wow. <laughs> Utter shite. <laughs> and without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. You have to play a sound effect, Alex. Sorry, wasn't close enough. Miss Craven. Oh, morning, Ray. Everything all right, Mrs. Craven? You look as worried as the vicar in closing time. <laughs> oh, Ray, it's those young louts. They've vandalised my shop again. No! Yes! <laughs> They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures and I know it's those damn youths. I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. I'm just worried they won't ever become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up as social outcasts such as shoplifters or bong rats. Don't worry, Mrs. Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. <laughs> See? Works like a charm. What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow. Look at all the letters in my collection today. Oh, I think that one's addressed to me. What? This, this one? Oh, so you're right. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> it's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. <laughs> she says she got an A on her maths exam because one of her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player, was our Brenda. What's up, losers? What's up? Oh, no. It's Brad. He's the coolest guy in the village. That's right. I just got here on my motorbike. Oh, clear off, Brad. We don't want any of your ilk around here. 
What? Radudes. No, ruffians. Have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say? Tutoring? That's right. Maths is very important. God damn it. Not at all. <laughs> so you, a young person, have been spending your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or huffing glue? Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, blow me da down! You, do you know what? We misjudged you mm. based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. Oh, no joy. So it wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful surprise. I now respect you as a man. <laughs> Put her there, Ray. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Give us a hug. Whoa! Oh no. Sorry to interrupt the first groundbreaking episode of the notice board, but uh, we're receiving some breaking news. I'm being told we're picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be... Oh God, what appear to be nuclear explosions in four major foreign cities. What? Initial estimates put the death toll into... Uh, into the millions. Uh, I'm being told that uh, we're experiencing some power fluctuations as a result, uh, so apologies to any interruption to the broadcast view at home. Um, uh, and now I am told that we are going live to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury at any moment. Yes, um, let's go to that now. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centers and will not hesitate to detonate them. Them, if our conditions are not met in full and without delay. The people of our territory will no longer tolerate your illegal and genocidal blockade. You are to remove it immediately. We will accept nothing less than your unconditional surrender. Your territories will be taken under our control. We will install replacement governments to ensure that your citizens become part of the new future. Your borders are now our borders. Your people are our people. Our hour will finally be fed and clothed and educated and healed. But for your privileged few, the moment that they feared is now upon them. Allow me to be crystal clear. If you fire a single shot at our territory or harm a single one of our citizens, we will not hesitate to detonate further devices. You will not find them, though no doubt you are already searching for them. 
Our technology is decades ahead of yours. You will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, where's the laugh track when I need it right there? Groshen, welcome in. Groshen, things have taken a turn. Oh, I'm... Oh, my God. Yeah, the tech does not look decades ahead. That could have been a bluff. I don't know. Let's keep going. Okay, so there you have it. Advance making a brave move that looks likely to end the war in this its 20th week. There's a lot to take in here. And I know you, like me, will be wondering if this is too much. If we've gone too far. But I'm thinking of our sick and ill denied their medicines. The children with no food on their plates and the body bags returning from the front line. And I ask myself if without some big, bold gesture it would ever stop, and I do not think it ever would. We elected advance to make this country better for us all, and it was working. But then the rest of the world looked at us and they said this cannot be seen to succeed. And they brought their warships and their tanks and their planes just to make sure that we were instead seen to suffer. To make sure no one anywhere would ever attempt this again. So, to my mind, our government have taken the only path available to them. A difficult decision for their hearts to bear, but one that ultimately we can respect because it is designed to keep us safe. And while this is unquestionably a dark night, it may indeed presage the dawn of a new future. My name's Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. And we're out. Do you ever get the feeling that you're making history? Well, I guess Megan made her choice. <laughs> oh, jeez. Maths is important. Oh, God. Yeah, I was, I was looking. I'm like, where's the orange line? Where's the orange line? Where is the orange line? There was no orange line. <laughs> oh, God. That was definitely a tough one. Oh, God. I'll buy that for a dollar. Oh, God. Oh, my, my company went up a little bit, finally. Maybe that's a little bit extra cash. I'll take that. Yeah, there was during Julia's speech, but I didn't want to cut away because regardless of what horrible shit she was saying, and that was some horrible shit she was saying, she is a political leader and, you know, we need to know what she's going to do. Oh, God. Especially right then. That didn't seem like a good time to be cutting away. Is your company providing nuclear bunkers? Um, fashion and uh, cosmetics, I believe. <laughs> Advance is not a fan of me. Resist is for some reason. And the studio still likes me, so there's that. Oh, God. <laughs> Day 371, a proportionate response. The rest of your shift passes in a blur with the same words going around and around your head. Operatives working for advance detonated nuclear, ex nuclear explosives. Initial estimates put the death toll in the millions. Did this really just happen? You peel into the driveway with no memory of the journey home. The light in the front room is on, clearly someone's still awake. The door creaks into the living room where you find Sam sitting on the sofa staring at the TV. The screen is off and they're clearly lost in thought. You take a seat beside them and put a reassuring hand on their shoulder. 
They start at your touch, breaking them out of their stupor. They attempt to smile, but you can see it's strained. Sorry, I didn't see you come in. I was thinking about... Sam stops, shaking her head. So many people. Can't quite believe it. I know, it's... Terrible. Nothing short of an atrocity. All those people, those poor people. How could anyone think this is okay? Sam's eyes are blazing with anger, and when they look to you, it's clear they're expecting agreement. I know we've never seen eye to eye with the government in this house, but I never thought they were capable of this. They had to be another way. Killing millions of people is never the answer. Relief sweeps across Sam's face. Exactly! No reasoning in the world could make killing so many innocent people the right thing to do! Sam kisses you before you head to the kitchen, calling over their shoulder. We're lucky you can actually make a difference. Help people know what's really going on. But is it that simple? It's not. It's the problem. Whoa! 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 Day 713! An academic exodus. What? <laughs> Did we jump like a year and change forward? <laughs> what? Oh my god, a freaking year passed! Holy crap! <sighs> it's a seemingly ordinary morning, but as you get into work, you find a small crowd gathered in the break room. When you go in to grab your first cup of tea of the day, you can't help but overhear some excited chatter. You didn't hear? Yeah, another one's gone missing. What's that bring the total up to now? Oh, I shouldn't think over 100 at this point. They won't all have been reported or noticed yet. I'm um, sorry, what's going on? An excited young woman turns to you and begins to explain. Another professor went missing from Queensview University. With all the other disappearances over the last year, scientists, doctors, researchers... She pauses before lowering her voice to a whisper. It's clearly disrupted targeting the people speaking out against them. I even heard advancers struggling to prevent further... A deep, familiar voice from behind you interrupts. What exactly is going on here? A silence overtakes the room as you all turn in unison towards the doorway. Bozeman clears his voice before continuing. I have told you before, I don't want to hear about these so-called disappearances. Come on now, people. Advance has been very clear that there's nothing to worry about, which means they're not our problem. And unless they start classing cappuccinos as intellectual, I don't think anyone here has anything to worry about. Best get back to work. Bozeman holds up a hand to keep you as everyone else files out of the room. Look, I know you have a habit of doing what you want, but things are different now. Advance runs the show and they've made their feelings very clear. So now, I'm doing the same. Channel 1's official position is that the government has things well in hand. Nothing more, nothing less. I trust they won't be hearing talk about this again. He gives you a curt nod before leaving. Seems that for better, for better or for worse, public ownership is now in full swing. Okay, so, uh... So, I'm uh, not exactly going to have the, the same uh, freedom in the booth as I might have before. I'm going to have to make my decisions very carefully, I suspect. Oh. Whoa! Day 850, a career in the making. You drum your fingers on the steering wheel impatiently as you wait for Charlie. Again. It's great that he's enjoying the cohesion cadets and is so enthusiastic, but does he really need to stay behind every week to help? It's your Saturday evening after all. Finally, you see him in the hall, a grin on his face. Can't help but smile back, the frustration starting to fade as you see him so genuinely happy. After hugging his friends goodbye, Charlie heads over to the car and gets in, his face flush with excitement. So how was... You're interrupted as he can't contain himself any longer. Guess what? Uh, what? You play along with a smile. So obviously the Cohesion Cadets is a starting point for becoming a CCO, so we got a head start for when applying for that. Charlie gushes, clearly clean, keen on explaining his news, almost tripping over the words in his effort to tell you. Well, apparently, from next year, the top 5% five, 5 of cadets will be taken into a special program to become CCMs, Community Cohesion Manager, and guess who's going to be in it? Uh, 
I see, and what exactly do these community cohesion managers do? Oh, well basically they need a new liaison team between regular people, the CCOs, and the Betterment Department. And that'll be us! People come to us with concerns, and we'll decide whether they need referrals, and if so, to which department. Cool, right? So you're gonna be helping people report on their friends and neighbors? Yeah, I guess. But only bad people. It's about helping the community, making it safer for everyone. Charlie frowns at you. You don't like the CCOs? Or the Betterment teams? I'm just worried about them having that much power and turning people against each other. You're starting to sound like people that advance are trying to help. Charlie looks at you, a serious expression on his face. Don't worry, I'll make sure that everyone gets the support they need. This is a good thing for the community, and the team will be able to help everyone. He nods to himself and sits back in the seat. The mood in the car is somewhat icy for the rest of the journey home. You hope it's not a sign of where things are going. Oh god! It's all gone wrong! Day 872, a spark to light the flames. After coming downstairs to grab breakfast, the peace and quiet tells you the rest of the family must still be asleep. Oh god, all of it. <laughs> Offer to help him make him eat the prompt cards. He needs to eat those prompt cards. Good for him. You decide to eat in the living room and watch some TV while you can before someone else monopolizes it. This is breaking news. Reports are coming in from across the country. The large swaths of farmland went up in flames last night as part of what authorities are calling a heinous and well-planned act of terrorism by the group known as Disrupt. You drop your spoon back in the porridge and turn up the volume. In addition to food stores, which government sources said will put a strain on universal menu centers worldwide, or countrywide, a number of CCO and Civic buildings were targeted in last night's attack. According to Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, specific prisons and re-education and betterment facilities were raided, and a small selection of problematic and potentially dangerous individuals were forcibly extracted from lawful custody. You hold your breath, waiting to hear if anyone got hurt. Unfortunately, it appears that the CCOs were ill-prepared for an event like this, and Disrupt seemed much more effective and well-organized in comparison. While most of the targeted locations were thankfully empty of people, given the lateness of the hour, the Betterment centers were fully staffed when they came under attack. 17 CCOs and 4 administrative staff lost their lives as a result of the brutal actions of Disrupt last night, with countless more injured, many seriously, and rushed to hospital. A few Disrupt members were captured during the conflicts, but the vast majority seem to have evaded capture so far. More in the story as it develops. You go to turn off the TV. You're interrupted by Charlie walking into the living room, bleary-eyed and with a piece of toast. Anything interesting going on? He gestures to the TV. Mutely, you leave the local news on as they cycle through the story again. Charlie watches in a hushed silence. By the end of the broadcast, they're dubbing it the Night of Fire. Everything's going to be okay, right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be fine, bud. It's going to be just great. <laughs> yeah, that's not a happy name, is it, Dame Karen? Not, not like that. Day 912. <laughs> that's the best tool tip we've gotten all game right there. Everyone, I want you to remember that. That's helpful advice. <laughs> Oh, God! Oh, God! <laughs> hey, Rose! Rose, we're having a day! How are you doing today, Rose? How's everything going with you? How's, every How's everything going with you? Oh, God, the E2! I'm just the guy that pushes the buttons at the news station! Day 912, The Uprising. A year and a half since Liberation Night. Can you hear me? Alex? Are you receiving? Yes? Calling. Come in, Alex. This is Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and we need your help. Throughout this broadcast, we're going to ask you to do things that will directly help with this mass protest. I'll be talking to you regularly tonight, and I'll also be hacking in when I can. Please help get our message out. We're on the verge, Alex. You've always been fair and balanced in your approach to us. 
With your help, we can tip the balance in our favor. If you play our tape at the second break, that's when we think it will have the most impact. It's on your right. Oh, God. All right, we're going to turn the power on first. Oh, he's a wanted criminal, Colin. So is my nan, but she never missed her birthday. Your grandmother's on the run, Colin. Yeah. Armed robbery, resisting arrest, double homicide of the same bloke. She's right a <laughs> Wait, Alan James? Alan James was never under arrest. He was always out there leading the, uh, the resist movement. Oh, good, Rose. Good. Good. I'm sure there was no brainwashing whatsoever, and it was a decent food, too. <laughs> oh, no, Jeremy. Doesn't look like. I don't know if uh, Jeremy's around. I hope Jeremy's doing okay, but I, somehow I don't think he's being treated well. I like that they acknowledge your balance. You've been tipping one way or the other. Yeah, I, I, I definitely have been, like. At the start, I was all in. Because the government was taxing the rich folks. I like taxing the rich folks. But then there was everything else. <laughs> oh, he's a wanted criminal. Oh, God. Maybe he, es oh, maybe he escaped. When they hit the jails and the re-education centers, maybe Jeremy escaped. Oh, good catch, Melkiel. Good catch. You can tell I miss stuff because I'm trying to mess with all the equipment here, so thank you for pointing that out. There is no war in bossing, say. Oh, that's good to hear, Flare Cat. Because <laughs> I'd been, I'd been hearing some stuff. <laughs> oh, God. So it sounds like I'm going to have some decisions to make tonight. So let's talk about that real quick. So, um... Obviously... The situation as it stands is untenable. <laughs> uh. Uh. The problem is I, I don't want to lean all the way towards resist either. Because number one, Alan James bit of a twat is the thing number one uh number two um burning farmland is horrific why did they do that oh god um so basically i think this is this game is as most games like this do i think the game is going to be like Ah, oh, whichever answer you chose, that's actually the bad one. You've chosen poorly, and now there's consequences. Because, you know, obviously that is how things work in the real world, is that there are consequences to any action you make. So, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, we can't let things keep going the way they're going, but also, I'd rather not have the entire country on fire. And I am a little worried about what Alan James is going to do. Exactly, Rose, exactly. Like, they're talking about, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're breaking political prisoners out of jail. Oh, that's cool. Also, they killed a bunch of people. That's less cool. Also, they burned some farmland. That's extremely not cool. Uh, we should ask Friend Computer about this, Rose, a fellow paranoia player, perhaps? Or at least paranoia enjoyer? That was the first role-playing game I ever played. As soon as I said that, I'm sure at least three people in chat are like, yeah, that makes sense. That explains a few things. <laughs> oh, they haven't nuked four cities. Yeah, that's... There is that as well, Flare Cat. Like I said, I do understand the situation is untenable. We have to do something. I can't... We have to do something. <laughs> that's all there is to it. Uh, I, I don't know that I'm going to lean all the way towards resist, but we gotta do something here. We gotta do something, shit. Uh, so I want to discuss that a little bit, because once it actually happens in the game, I'm probably not going to have a lot of time to react, and I'm going to have to uh, go on instinct. And it turns out that when I go on instinct, sometimes I do some really dumb things, because I'm, I'm not great under pressure. 
I'm not. <laughs> so we're going to see what happens. I'm, I'm going to jump in here. We're going to see what happens. I hope he's all right, though. He's got this far, and your brother was fine. We're going in 10 seconds, everybody. I wonder what they're doing. Annoying him, probably. Not probably. Definitely. Going in five, four, three. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News, broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wolf. Our top stories tonight. Future legend. It's been 40 days since Disrupt conducted multiple attacks across the territories. During the coordinated action, subsequently dubbed the Night of Fire, emergency services were kept busy at the agricultural centres, while a series of covert attacks were carried out freeing political prisoners, including former newsman Jeremy Donaldson. Nothing has been heard from the missing journalist since the violent Disrupt attack on his convoy six weeks ago. Donaldson was on his way back to Betterment after his notorious court appearance. All of us here at Channel One hope that wherever he is now, he's safe. Food, glorious food. With the last of the menu centres opening in territories 5, 8 and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the programme is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractor Pants, spokesman for the menu centres, said today that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankby or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. If I were a rich man, problems in territories 11, 17 and 22 today as striking bosses attempted to undermine their new economies. With seemingly no awareness of irony, the former CEOs and MDs have come together to form the Wealth Creators Union, with demands including a return to 150% bonuses, private jets and mandatory grovelling zones. In an annoying show of petulance, the former elites drove their luxury vehicles at 10 miles per hour up and down the motorways of their respective territories. The coordinated protest of elites inconvenienced several hundred thousand of their employees. Some fun now. Signs of ever more resistance to Advance's radical policies today as popular resistance movement Disrupt extended their reach further across the territories. The organization's emblem appeared in every major city across the territories last night in a well-coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. Asked about the impressive display earlier today, Disrupt spokesperson Alan James said that the movement was reaching what he described as a critical mass. A poor choice of words given recent history. Three of our regular stories reach their natural conclusions tonight. CEO RIP. Sad news today as the remains of missing Sophia Remington were found this morning at the company's Grizzleford facility. Sophia had become ever more reclusive following the total and utter failure of her pet project. Having flung herself into one of the toxic preparation vats, she was only identifiable by her ears. A spokesman for Remington's Fist said, Sophia will remain in our hearts and in the approximately 45,000 flowers that rolled off the production line in the last few days. A tragic ending for Sophia Remington after a turbulent two and a half years since she took over the company. Fun guy. Unexpected news today as two familiar scientists announced the birth of an extraordinary child. The underground struggle of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgan's Ward captured the hearts of people around the world. And after an arduous return voyage, which took over a year, the couple say they've never been happier. Baby Dante is said to be healthy, if a bit partial to the air in cupboard. Hit the woodwork. Disgraced former sportsman Johnny Hamsleeves isn't half the man he used to be. Quite literally. After selling a kidney a year ago to pay for his substance addiction, Johnny says he's finally found the answer. In a candid interview with Grip magazine, Johnny admits that although he finally has enough cash to support his habit, his homemade prosthetics have made taking the drugs a bit tricky. All that, plus we'll be taking a trip to Dangley Parts for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News.
first, 500 days after the loss of a fine leader and a great man. The start of tonight's program is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Patrick. Listening to that old bitch lying through her teeth about missing that poor bastard. Uh, Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny. Things were better with Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were, because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Hello, Patrick. We're live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? No, no, no. Not with public ownership. No, with public oh, ownership, you can't say anything Patrick these days. She's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. I heard from an aide. That... Hello, Megan. You join me here live from the what? Hello, Megan. You join me here live from the what? Oh. Uh, uh. Oh. Seems like we've lost some signal there for a moment. <laughs> well, we will be going live to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek at the designs and Alana Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, OK. All right. It seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. I'm Patrick Bannon and we are indeed live here. Apologies for the technical difficulties there. But any moment now, Julia Salisbury will step out on stage behind me. Alex, both of you. The boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. You're going to have to do it on the fly. What? For goodness sake, make sure you make him look good. Slowly gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. We can undermine them here and help us win hearts and minds. Make him look bad, Alex. Really bad. Okay. 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 Wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 jeez. <laughs> Patrick Bannon looks a little bit different than I remember him looking. I feel like something changed there. I'm not sure what. <laughs> Flare cat. Oh, God. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. We can do this. We can do this. He bleached? Really? That? How did he do that so fast? He was off the air for like 20 seconds. That is both impressive and terrifying. Uh, Patrick, I hope for your your scalp is doing okay. Um, uh, you, you see that smile there? He looks... They, they, Patrick looks like they're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, the contrast between the two. That's like a two second delay is what that is. All right, let's do this. All right. And it seems like the ceremony is getting underway. Here is Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her address. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, Another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader, a statesman, a dear friend, and a hero. Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. Born to a working class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television. First moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught us, all of us, not to be content with the way things are. Not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them. Courage, integrity, empathy, and hard bloody graft. <laughs> Across a career spanning three decades, Peter Clement was known for shows including Wake Up, it's Saturday, and much later, late-night chat show Petey, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. 
Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. <laughs> he always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character that he chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements, his faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these United Territories. Hmm. Famous for his potty mouse, it's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over 1.5 million swear words during his career, though some sources put this figure well in excess of 2 million F-bombs alone. Gripped by illness as he was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night, he wasn't the man we loved. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago, moments before I was supposed to give a speech. Not unlike this one, actually. Only I'd, um, I'd spilt coffee all down myself. and I was young, nervous, desperate to be liked. And from behind me, I heard, Christ, Pet, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> and before I could even say a word, he'd stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. Kind, compassionate, sensitive, a brilliant thinker, a natural leader, but mostly a good man. This glorious nation of ours, so beautiful and new, this shining beacon of... Thank you, Alex. There'll be another opportunity to steer public perception soon. It's really starting. You'll know when. His accomplishments, the future he forged, the, the boundaries he pushed. To me, he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the Peter Clement Memorial Garden. Oh, should we see if we can get a countdown going? Everyone with me. 10, 9, 8, 7. Now, Alex, control the message. We have to get into safety. Come with us. I'm not leaving. I can't. Oi. You two, come with me. Don't panic. 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 Look at me, look at me. I can't hear you, I, I can't hear anything. Yes, <laughs> medics are coming, you sit down. No, I can't hear you, I'm from the National Nightly News. Well, then you can consider this payback. <laughs> Salisbury's still here. <laughs> Julia Salisbury! You are guilty of the murder of more than 10 million people. Justice demands a response. Haven't you done enough? Look around you! This is what your precious freedom looks like, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. In the streets, the time has come. Dark fires, break windows, draw them out. They can't stop us all. Resist, destroy. Lower your weapons. Mom? Yeah. Lower your weapons. Oh, Rotation, boss. Granted. No. It was unnecessary. No. <laughs> I said, please turn that off. Please turn that off. 
Shocking scenes from the capital there, exclusively. Shocking scenes from the You've just seen them execute unarmed civilians. People like you and me. So why are you watching this? Why are you not in the streets with us tonight? What will it take for you to get up and be a part of this? March on team headquarters. Storm the building. Demand elections. Demand answers. Be what you're going to be. The once and future free. That means by now. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. We'll be back. That didn't go so well, Alex. But we can turn it around in the next segment. That was a lot. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! Oh! <laughs> New Patrick just dropped. Oh God! I just noticed that. All right. All right. So uh, everything's horrible. Everything's horrible. Um. Yeah, like I predicted at the beginning of this day, there's there's not going to be a lot of there's not going to be a lot of good or easy ways through this. Yeah, R.I.P. New Patrick. Oh God, let's keep going while I got the momentum. This is becoming a weekly event. No, it's different tonight. This is the big one. Great. So there's a revolution happening outside and we're off to dandy fucking parts. That's journalism, apparently. We get set for the next sequence. Oh, I got an A-plus for that segment. Yay, good. Doing great. Doing great. Oh. <laughs> what is happening in that commercial? What is happening in that commercial? During this next section, a cameraman working in the newsroom who's one of us is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on, but if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. Our operatives will do the rest. All right. Meg, this is your new makeup artist, Craig. No. What? No. Ten seconds, everybody. Sorry, Craig. It's a no. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Megan Wolf. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. It, it connects with people. You know, people look at us and they say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mmm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Mm. Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. So, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, mm. um, my talent, my look. Wow, you really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, 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 you're welcome. Mm. We've just heard our man's on camera four. I have a real sense of responsibility now. You know, a sense I've been entrusted with something precious and that I Get back to the interview, Alex. Good. <laughs> That's really important that we should use this platform to, to do good in the world, I agree. That's exactly it. So I've decided to help as many Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next, you'll need to give them the go. Is that um, better access to education or you know, reducing child poverty? Oh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, how, many, how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late 30s. 
goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a futon in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey, I live a privileged life. What can I say? I mean, any child I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children. Were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're Norbans, I presume so. OK. <laughs> Yeah, it's shocking to think, actually, that only one in 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Hmm. I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable, then? Well, it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water. So, uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. <laughs> now that I can relate to. Right, <laughs> you better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Radin sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything in perspective. Clearly, not everyone else agrees, but that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. What a day! First the tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait, perhaps I do. Oh! By Saint Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirtbag! Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. It's just me, a community cohesion officer, responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course. I keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? I know. It's a disgrace. Somebody it's time for the go code. Give us three balls in a row, Alex. That will start the pincer movement. We might just pull this off. Push forwards! Three balls, Alex. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. Yes! It's no good. It looks like all those crucifit classes were a waste of time. Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to move it. Two for two. Fantastic. <laughs> looks like all those lifting classes were a waste of time. <laughs> it's too heavy, even for me. A strong, capable. You did it, Alex. We're good to go. Charge! To lift this. Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? Hi! Well done, Captain Evans. You're so much stronger than us. Especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. No luck catching the little devil, then? Unfortunately not. The ferret struck again last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. My God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate! Don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. Laura, tell me, why do they call him the ferret? Some say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really, it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. 
The community cohesion team are doing their best, but they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open. <laughs> Me! Blackout! Oh, God. Ah, it's the morning of the village fete, thanks to theatrical convention. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's Mrs. Craven setting up her cake stall. And look, there's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that will be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you judging the jams? I couldn't possibly. Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <gasps> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. That damn ferret has struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, ferret. <gasps> Me? drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you! The vicar! Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it! You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays. I shouldn't have to work two days a week! <gasps> but how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next, <laughs> I noticed that the vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> 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 Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room Jam. Almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! Oh. <sighs> you did it, Captain. You could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. So that was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. And what a way to end it. Thank you, as always, to Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Wow! <laughs> what a brilliant run, eh? After party at my place, eh? What advert is this, Alex? I don't remember passing it for broadcast. I think you made a mistake there. Uh, I've got four kinds of sausage. You've probably seen me. Hey, you, you. You coming to the after party? And how progressive their policies are. Oh, fuck. And I'm here tonight to say I'm sorry. I'm here. Last push, Alex. We're closing in. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. We'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. It's happening, Alex. Tonight we take it back. I always envied my friends who had so much more. Over the years, my jealousy grew. So when Advance came to power, I didn't think about the damage they would do. I... I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards Advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under Advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. We are infantilized by Advance's naive policies. 
Please, Sarah, anything. Sorry, Mum, I'm really not supposed to say. Are we safe? Hi, I'm Maddie. Uh, Johnny just said to ask if you need any touch up. Did she? That's my shade, is it? Uh, yeah. This is my shade. Mm. Whoa! You can run back to Jenny now. Wow! What the fuck? Sorry about that, Sarah. Nothing you can tell me. Look, at all, like at all. They've said no one's died, that's all I can say. Ten seconds. What's wrong with you? She is in tears. Ugh. Going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking disrupt attack. But first, I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical everyone is talking about. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm National Nightly welcome to the Novaries. Hello? Doctor? Yes, I see. Thank you for letting me know. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. And my job is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, John. He's due home soon, won't be long. And I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling. We share coffee. Darling John, oh, dear John. John, there's something very wrong. I've just had a conversation with our doctor David Wong, so please be seated. This news will make you feel defeated. The scans revealed a lump. You, you poor unlucky chump. Is it cancer? Worse of John, we're having a baby. What? How can this be? Oh, woe oh, is me. Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. safety. In our what? tiny flat, we built a peaceful habitat. Now our lives are fucked. We're having, having a baby. baby. Now you can't have any wine at the club. And there won't be any time for foot rubs. Now your hair will stink of weed. And you'll start to disagree. And forget about that holiday in Territory 3. No more waking up at half past ten. In fact, you're never going to get a good night's sleep again. No more snap decisions to go on to a club. You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub. Why can't we be more like our gay and lesbian charge? The only who they have to deal with comes from personal bums. A sick day at home. The parasite won't leave you alone. How he's wrong. We're our top priority. I look after you, and you look after me. Ain't no trouble and strife. We got a childless life. No one wails and no one bawls. No one draws things on the walls. A happy husband, a wonderful wife. We got a childless life. We're having a baby. We're having a baby. Changing nappies daily. Show. 
amazing. The Novaries there, treating us to their opening number from Energy for a Childless Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the capital theatre district. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. Right then, come on you got. Come on down, let's go. Don't be shy, be shy. <laughs> Hello. Hi Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh really, are you fans of the show? Yes. yes. Used to be. <laughs> well, listen, let's get stuck in. You're an amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night. With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas, and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How rude of me. I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, <laughs> I'm Jack. <laughs> Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sapley. Used to be in the business professionally. My name's Jill, with a J. And I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. Oh my goodness, guys! Our names all begin with J. Uh, How have we never noticed that? Uh, because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? Maybe. <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing where we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe as well as being friends, you're also couples. You know, in real life as well as in the show. Well, <laughs> oh, well. God, not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Oh, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. What about John? Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was very confusing. Not for a professional. <laughs> After much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> and gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. Right. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, God, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Mimbley Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, mm. it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital! <laughs> it's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. Yeah. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. <laughs> <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. Uh, this piece isn't. <laughs> Stand by, Alex. Sense of the orange. About children hmm? and why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be affected by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. Well, you understand, Megan. You clearly agree. Wow, this isn't about me. Of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives, and there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. You're very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one, because... You're the youngest, we know! It's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Janet. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Yes, well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. And there's lots of singing. And dancing. A lot. Mm. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle-eyed, she sees her friends rapidly advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. 
I probably said too much already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not spoil the second act for anyone who might to see it. <laughs> Which should be all of you. <laughs> for too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete, that, that children are, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research, and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. We just want people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without stigma. <laughs> you know, when I was 14, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to... Dip my toes into the air. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. The Noble is there. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Maggot. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of tonight's devastating and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. Uh, I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. I couldn't leave. Not, not when there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. Or Palisades. Or lemonade. Right. So, is the situation... Now, are we safe? Uh, yes. Um, the security services perform their duties without hesitation. And I would like to assure the public that, although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Oh, that's good news about the civ... Sorry, did you... Did you say no deaths? That's right. No civilian deaths. Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were, as always, so cohesive. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Oh, of course, the camera, there's, speak there, on, on the camera there. Stay at home tonight. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment, but as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. Thank you, Prime Minister, for those strong words of strength. Back to the studio, Megan now in the studio with Megan Wolf now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Night News. But before we go, the victory is in sight, my friends. You have mobilised. You have come together from our agents at the television networks risking arrest and getting those words to you to the many hundreds and thousands gathering to invade team headquarters as I speak we are turning the tide and it is time for change tonight we topple their regime and we also silence their mouthpiece channel one time to wake up what? from the shadows and they are not the overwhelming force they would have you believe the military have been actioned and well it's pretty scary out there tonight so stay at home and stay with channel one because the team has even has assured this program that the turbulence will soon be over what we to focus our minds on building the new future with equality fairness and resources for all my name is Megan Wolf. let's make tomorrow better damn it alex tonight is the beginning of the fall of the france
Yeah, um... Some things happened. Several... Several things happened. Decisions were made. Consequences coming shortly. <laughs> Will they be good? No. No, they're not going to be. Everything's bad. Everything's bad. Path chosen. <laughs> to throw the walkie-talkie out the window. Yeet. The revolution was televised. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, boss. I just butterfingers. Oopsies. Oopsies. Push, push the wrong button there. Silly me. Oh, silly me. Oh god. Yeah, this is this is gonna go badly for me. This is gonna go badly for me. I got my full wages. Yay! My shares went down. Boo. <laughs> Advance does not like me. For some reason, Resist does. Can't imagine why. TV station's still happy with me. I'm still doing my job. I'm doing my job. <sighs> I, I was in the bathroom, boss. I had to do a pool. Why? What happened? Did, did someone press a button? Oops. Oops. Hey, Claire, welcome in. How are you doing today, Claire? Hope everything is going good with you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Day 913, an important, oh, God, an important review. Oh, God, we're in the boss's office. Oh, 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 immediate consequences. Consequences right away. Cool. Good. Excellent. This is this is what I was hoping for. Good. Excellent. Oh, Mr. Bozeman, hey. Hey, buddy. You arrive at work a little early despite a stressful journey in. You still aren't quite sure of everything that happened, though if the swarm of CCOs all over the building is anything to go by, this isn't just a Channel 1 matter. This is confirmed when you are informed that you need to speak to Bozeman immediately and you are escorted to his office. You sit nervously outside waiting for your boss. A few minutes later, the boss man arrives, disheveled and with a stern-looking CCO in tow. Ah yes, Winston, good. This is Specialist Abels. She'll be observing this interview. Please, come inside and take a seat. The ruddy-faced man bustles into his office and leaves the door open for you to follow. The few times you've been here before, it was immaculate. Everything in its proper place. Not so today. It must be serious for Bozeman to be this flustered. So, Alex, do you know why you're here today? Bozeman's eyes are sharp and his gaze is fixed on your face across the desk. Abel's is standing behind you, out of sight, but definitely not in, uh, out of mind. Um, yeah. Not really, no, I wasn't involved with anything that happened yesterday. What happened last night was nothing short of the culmination of a heinous and outrageous campaign of terror that Disrupt have been reaping on the station and its territories. Bozeman shoots a glance behind you to your left where the, your CCO observer is standing. And it is, of course, our duty to root out this rot wherever we find it and prevent anything like last night from happening ever again. I have been asked by Advance to perform interviews with all staff members involved and will be submitting a personal review of your performance both during the incident in question and throughout your time here. Oh, this can only end well. He shoots you a quick smile. Don't worry, it'll all be fine. Arranging some papers, Bozeman clears his throat and begins. Obviously, a lot happened last night, and I have a number of interviews to conduct today, so I'd rather none of them take any longer than necessary. Please be brief, concise, and clear in your answers. You nod. Let's start at the beginning of the broadcast and work our way through. After the attack at the memorial, it seemed to have portrayed the terrorists in a quite sympathetic light. Why? Uh, oh god, there's no right answer here, is there? Yeah, I was pooping! I was pooping! Um... I, I just showed what was happening in the news, that's our job, right? Yes, of course, and with everything in flux, you weren't to know what would happen next. 
I'm certain you did the best you could, Alex. You always do. Bozeman scribbles some notes down, the noise of his pen scratching into his notepad, punctuated only by the constant tick-tock of his ornate clock. Hopefully this will all be over soon. Reviewing the broadcast, we noticed something a little odd about a particular camera choice. It was when everyone else was talking. Oh, where did I put it? Ah, yes, here we are. Do you recognize this? With a flourish, Bozeman produces the leaflet from the notice board and places it on the desk in front of you. I assumed it was just part of the set. Why else would it have been there and on camera? Well, that makes sense. You're responsible for maintaining the set. You can only assume that what's there is meant to be after all. You get the feeling at least some of the above was for the benefit of the CEO in the room. CCO in the room. Thank you, Alex. And again, for a bell's benefit, you're so loyal. Not exactly subtle there. Hey, Fallals! Welcome in! How are you doing today, Fallals? How's everything going with you? And Warded! Nice all in there. Congratulations. There was one thing we noticed during the finale of the notice board. Bozeman picks up some notes on the other side of his desk. You seem to play an odd choice of sound effects relatively early on. Now, the script was expecting laughs, but for all three, you chose to play booze. Well, why did you do that? Um... I, I felt they were the most appropriate choices. Art is subjective, after all. Well, of course. Obviously, we want our shows here at Channel 1 to be as successful as possible, and we allow our staff a significant degree of auto autonomy. I'm sure no one would try to fault you for simply having a different sense of humor. You can see Bozeman is frowning as he writes this, clearly not convinced by his own words. Maybe he likes you more than you thought? How many other people would he be interviewing today? At this point, Bozeman take out a pair of glasses and place them somewhat delicately on the end of his nose. Then the portly man leaned forward to examine his notes in detail. Now, obviously, we expect an odd bit of interference here and there, and avoidable. He pauses, turning the page at an agonized pace. Interference is not the same as terrorist propaganda. Would you care to explain how so much of their messaging found its way onto our airwaves? The machine's been out of date for years. Even the last update didn't make life any easier. Out of the corner of your eye, you note Specialist Abels is visually more attentive, awaiting your boss's response. Well, it's certainly true that accidents happen. With the various stresses of last night's broadcast, I don't think anyone could begrudge you a slight drop in attention. Bozeman smiles warmly at you as Abels returns to their passive stance. You offer a strained smile back. A loud creak breaks the silence as Bozeman leans back in his chair. The tape of that poor Miss Brightman. Why did you play it? Help me understand. Why play that tape? As you meet his gaze, you're almost surprised to see an earnest concern in the man's eyes. <sighs> this is getting really tough. Shiro, welcome in. How are you doing today? Follows, you're feeling better finally. Hell yeah, Follows. Hope that means you can enjoy your weekend to the fullest. <sighs> oh, this is tough. This is really tough. It seemed like the news. Isn't that what we do? Show the news? He watches Bozeman slowly cleans his glasses before answering. Well, at the end of the day, you chose to do it, Alex. I don't know if I had done the same in your shoes, but I think it's clear enough you thought it was the right thing to do. And that's all we can ask of you. He clears his throat and leans forward, a smile once again on his face. I believe that's all I had for you, anyhow. Thank God it's over. I think that's all the information we need for now, Winston. Bozeman looks questioningly at the CCO, but by the time you've turned around, the moment has passed. Best you go, just go home for now. There's no work for you until we get a new satellite tower up. But of course, don't leave town. I may have more questions for you following the other interviews. As you leave, you see open hostility in Specialist Abel's eyes. Well, you knew there'd be consequences. Did Bozeman actually stand up for us there? Sure felt like it. Wow! Is that another year later? Day 1217, a banquet for some. Another year, she would seem. 
Let me get caught up on shit real quick. Let's see. Claire, this reminds you a little bit of Shibuya Scramble. Oh, yeah, I can definitely see the uh, comparisons there. It's a good game so far, but it's pretty intense, though. It's like a time machine. Magic. It, se it seems like he likes us. I don't know why. I thought we hated He thought he... We... We thought he hated us, but here we are, I guess. It's your anniversary, and this year, you've got a plan. A week away could be just what the doctor ordered for you and Sam, but it won't be cheap. <sighs> so our options here are, it's more than you normally spend, but Sam's worth every penny, and spending that much on a holiday might be a bit frivolous, though. <laughs> Shira, nice all in there. That's possible, Malkiel. It's not something we've ever seen from him before, but for some reason he seemed to like us. Of course, he might actually just believe everything that we're saying, that we're just trying to do the right thing. It's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Any more locks in the horizon? Oh, God. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you think, Chet? Should we uh, do a big spend on a week away with our partner? Or do we uh, admit that times are tough right now and we have to uh, make sure we're not spending beyond our means? Because, you know, there is some bad stuff going on. We might need the money. I agree, Malkil. It's It's just a question of... What was his motivation for doing that, is what I'm wondering. <laughs> That's true, Claire. I've, I'm going to make my own decision on this one, but I'm curious what people have to say. Rin, big spend because war brings inflation. It's all going to go up anyway. I mean, fair, actually. <laughs> yeah, Blue Lion, also a good point right there. Let's live it up before we get black bagged. Also a possibility there. Yeah, you know, you know, I, th I think you're actually right, Chet. You've convinced me. It's more than you normally spend, but Sam is worth every penny. It's been rough times. I think we need a little bit of normalcy, a little bit of coming back together. We had a lot of bad stuff coming ahead, I'm sure. So, you know, we, we got, you got to stay close to the, the people you love. That's important. Time to do some sketchy shit. Do da, do da. Hope we get away with it. Oh, the do da day. <laughs> Shiro, that's uh, what I'm thinking basically every time I'm playing these games. <laughs> yeah, it's more than you normally spend, but Sam's worth every penny. Oh, we're we're now in worrying debt. That was a that was a much bigger jump than I anticipated. But okay, okay, we're fucked now. Good, cool. That was... What? <laughs> Sam still hasn't forgotten that missed anniversary, but you've not made that mistake again in the three years since, damn Bozeman. With the trip booked, you even took the today off so you can go all out and cook a nice meal from scratch. Fancy. Sam's gonna love it. They should be here any minute. Even you and Chris seem to be on the same page for the first time in years. Maybe it's been long enough for them to forgive you, or perhaps they've decided they were unfair to ask you, but either way, you're grateful for the newfound peace. They even helped you clean up the house today, so when Sam gets back from work, it'll be pristine. You hear keys in the lock and put the final touches in place. As Sam steps into the hallway, you're waiting in the doorway to the kitchen, dressed to the nines, and acting as nonchalant as possible. Alex, what? what's all this? Oh my god, did you clean? What's that smell? They give you a quick kiss as they step past you into the kitchen where the banquet is laid out, candles lit with Chris and the children standing quietly grinning. Oh my god, Alex. Happy anniversary, Sam. Happy anniversary, comes the chorus from your three cheerleaders as Sam turns to you smiling and with tears in their eyes. Alex, it's perfect. Sam rushes over and kisses you softly, only breaking off when you get a, a less than subtle cough from Charlie. So, I got officially accepted into the Community Cohesion Management Program, Charlie blurts out. And how do you feel about being grandparents, Susie continues. What? Wait, what was the... Kidding, kidding, thought it might be... Though it might be sooner than you think, Susie laughs as Sam grabs the door frame for support. 
All right, you two are coming with me before you give your parents a heart attack. We'll see you later. Tomorrow. Is it not tonight? With a wink, they finish ushering Charlie and Susie out of the house. These kids are monsters. They need to be stopped at all costs. <laughs> yes, yeah, Susie, were you not listening to the musical? The musical was very clear. Very clear. <laughs> You're gonna give me a heart attack. Crimes. You pull out Sham's, Sam's chair for them. Why, thank you, Sam says, taking a seat and grinning at you. Sounds like the kids are keeping busy. They shake their head as they take your own seat opposite them. Tomorrow. For now. You really didn't have to do all this, Alex. I know. I wanted to. I love you, Sam. I love you, too. They breathe, admiring the panoply of food you've prepared for them. Now where on earth do I begin? They laugh as you pour the first glass of champagne of the evening. You're very lucky to have such a wonderful family. Who could ask for more? They said, foretelling doom. Oh god! Oh god, stop! Oh god! Oh god, slow down! Day 1557, an unwelcome discovery. That was more than a year, wasn't it? I don't know, that was a long time. Sam's call had been brief but urgent. Susie was in hospital and had asked both of you to come. You left work immediately. Bozeman had grudgingly accepted that a family emergency was cause enough to leave on short notice. They were sure he muttered something about you about making up the hours. When you ask at the front desk, they direct you to Susie's room. You run up the two flights of stairs and along the corridor until you find the right room. Another one? That's what, five? The two nurses outside cut themselves off as you push past in the room. Sam is at your daughter's bedside speaking with a doctor. Susie is in a medical gown. Both faces are streaked with tears. What's wrong? What's happened? The doctor looks sympathetically towards you as you move to put your arms around the pair of them. Susie should be fine after she's had some time to rest. However, I'm afraid we were unable to save the baby. Sam hugs Susie as her daughter breaks down in tears. Oh, God. I know this is hard to hear right now, but it looks like it could be difficult, if not, possible, if, if not impossible, for you to conceive. Again, I am terribly sorry, and if you have any questions at all, I'll be just outside. The three of you are left alone in the room, hugging tight as if that could somehow fix this. Your poor little girl. You wish there was something you could do. Anything. But there isn't. For now, all you can do is hold her close and protect your daughter as best you can. Jesus, this gets grim. Alright, that wasn't quite a year, I don't think. Day 1764, a job down. Everything is ready. You and Sam have been trying to watch Bullet Man for years, but you miss it in the cinemas and it never seemed to be in stock when one of you went to pick up the VHS. This is the 80s. Now you're just waiting for them to get home so you can start. You hear the front door open as they put a bowl of popcorn on the coffee table. We're all ready to go, get your butt in here. Sam comes in with a vacant stare, ignoring both film and snacks as they sit down next to you. You actually have to nudge them to break their super stupor. Sam, what is it? I, uh, I've just been let go. From work. Sam is just staring into space. Apparently there just isn't a need for two nursery teachers anymore. Not enough children. But they can't justify the expense. Honey, I'm so sorry. It'll be okay. You'll find another place. No, you don't get it. There just isn't that demand for younger year teachers anymore. Not just here. Anywhere. I don't know what I'm going to do. What we're going to do. You pull Sam into a hug. I know things are tough, but we'll think of something. How, Alex? We're barely scraping by as it is. And now... Sam starts to sob. We're going to have to sell the house. We can't see any other option. We've got too many debts to pay. If that's what we have to do, fine. It's only the two of us living here now anyway. I suppose you're right. Still, I hate the idea of losing this place. Think of everything that's happened here, Alex. They fall silent, thinking. Eventually you start the film, but neither of your hearts are in it. Too busy thinking about the future. Still, a house isn't everything. It's the people who make it a home. Home is where the heart is, after all. Not the popcorn soup! 
Whew, we are really moving now. Day 1975. And we are heading back into the studio, it would appear. I might see something too. Give me just a sec. All right. Whew, my goodness. About Nano, I think you're right. Day 1975, the sterility. Three years since the uprising. Hello, Alex. I've checked the schedule for tonight. Nothing major to report. Certainly isn't anything you can't handle. Still, at least my daughter's in for Advance's new initiative. That should liven things up a bit here. Keep up the good work. Okay. A rundown of the top selling songs across the territories. Expect catchy tunes and scenes of an inappropriately sexual nature. Not one to miss. At ten. Oh. All right. I'm trying to think. I want to do this. Uh, let me check one more thing real quick. Hang on a moment. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, this has been a lot this stream, so here's what I'm thinking, folks. I think we're going to call it here. It's a tiny bit earlier than I was expecting, but here's the thing. If we pause here, what we should be able to do is tomorrow we'll finish the game, and then we've actually got two bonus episodes we can play after the end, uh, which is uh, one of them is called the Telethon, um, and the other one is the new DLC that just came out yesterday called Live and Spooky. Excuse me. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. I think we all need to step back, take a little breather, stand up, walk around, grab a drink of water, take a breath, find something fun to do. Because <laughs> while this has been very entertaining, it's also been very intense. And it's good to step away from the feeling for a little bit after that. Get some distance. I keep being shocked this is still going. I don't know where it's going to end at this point. This is incredible. Uh, a little terrifying, but incredible. <laughs> oh. And I'm missing miming throwing the ball. <laughs> oh, that worrying dead again. It is. It is. So I appreciate everybody being here. I hope you've enjoyed the laughs we had, which we did have a whole bunch. And I hope you've been... Uh, Taking care of yourself through all the more traumatic stuff, which is also happening today. <laughs> we'll see where it's all leading to tomorrow, though it sounds like we'll be ending on some laughs with those DLCs. So that's a good thing, at least. Uh, so here is the schedule we're looking at for this week. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be finishing Not For Broadcast, as well as playing what, uh, uh, what bonus episodes we have available. Um, and then Sunday... We are going to be starting the next game on our schedule, which, if you haven't seen, is going to be ReCore, a third-person action and puzzler game from the Xbox era. Let's see. Malkiel, thank you for playing this game for us, by the way. It's a surprisingly good game. Nice balance of horror, comedy and horror. It swings really hard in both directions, but I think it is a good balance. They do know how to let out the tension at the right times, I think, which is nice, because uh, sometimes you do need those laughs. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. And uh yeah, if you can stick around for one more minute, I would really appreciate it, all of you, because we do, of course, have one last thing to do before we wrap it up for the night, and that is We gotta see who all else is online. So if you're not done watching Twitch, hopefully I can steer you somewhere fun. So make sure to hit uh Follow if you haven't already. That'll be the quickest way to find me tomorrow or at any point in the future. If you'd like to stop back in, we'd love to have you. And while I'm looking to see who all is live right now, there are some links in chat you might want to check out if you haven't seen them already, including a link to my YouTube if you'd like to see some of the games I have played before. Or if you just want to uh, get caught up on our current playthrough, that'll work as well. 
And we have a link to my Discord if you would like to chat with uh, me or the rest of the community outside of the stream. Feel free to join us there. We'd love to have you. And I think I see where we're heading right now. I don't know how much longer they're going to be on, but they are playing a very cool game uh, that I've never seen anybody on Twitch play before. So this is going to be friggin' awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would love it if you join me as we go raid none other than Lux Latellus. She's a very cool retro streamer that plays a really amazing variety of stuff. And today, uh, she is playing Klonoa 2 for the Game Boy Advance. Which, I know Klonoa, I've seen some Klonoa, I've never seen anyone play the Game Boy Advance version, so that is really cool. So why don't you join me over there, say hi to Lux, hang out for a little bit, throw her a follow if you like what she's doing, but hey... If you've got other things to do, I will just say as I always do. Have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at in the world. I will see you folks tomorrow for the conclusion of Not For Broadcast. Take care of yourselves. Till then, everybody.